what is going on guys welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to be taking a deeper look at apple's sf symbols which is their uh, framework for uh, creating symbols it stands for san francisco symbols so we're here on the developer website where they've got sf symbols 2 preview uh, shown uh, so we're going to take a look at this, get into coloring, sizing, uh, different weights, and all that good stuff. So make sure you destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe while you're at it. Get excited. Get Xcode ready. Let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so first things first, so if you head on over to this website uh, for Apple developer design section, they actually have a link to download the SF symbol app for your Mac. And this is basically just a catalog of all of the symbols that are available. So I definitely encourage you to download this. Uh, alternatively, if you are not on a Mac for whatever reason, or you have a, a VM running on a Windows machine, you could also head on over to sfsymbols.com a uh, similar thing here, they've got the names of the symbols. You can copy them, you can search them. Uh, my biggest gripe about this website is they have the name, but they don't actually have the symbol itself, which is kind of funny. But anyways, these are the two references that you should definitely check out. Let's jump into Xcode and actually implement some of this and see some live examples. So we're gonna open up Xcode and we're gonna get started with a new project. We're going to stick with a single view app and I'm going to go ahead and call this SF symbols and let's go ahead and save it. As always, let's get started by picking a simulator, hitting that run button and let me also expand my Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work with. And let's talk about symbols. So first up, why do you care about SF symbols or why should you care about SF symbols? There's a variety of reasons. Uh, number one is they're awesome symbols. They're built into the system, iOS 13 and up for you. You can change the weight, you can change the color. They're consistent. They're awesome looking in dark mode, light mode, they adapt, uh, so on and so forth. For all of, uh, all of my friends out there that have been doing iOS for a while, the pain of creating symbols was terrible back in the day. It was the worst thing ever. It was very, very annoying. Um, it's basically the only reason I picked up Photoshop skills. But uh, anyways, those days are behind us. Let's look at these symbols. So to use a symbol, you can basically drop it in uh, in a UI image. And to do that, we're going to want uh, a image view. So I'm going to start by creating an image view here. And we're going to say image view is a UI image view. Let's go ahead and fix that typo. And we want to return said image view and let's also make sure that we give this a uh, content mode whoops content mode of scale aspect fit and let's also give this guy a frame we can hard code the width and height make the x and y zero zero we'll stick with 150 and 150 and let's go ahead and add that as a sub view and let's also assign it to be centered on the screen. And let me also give this a background color of, uh, let's go with system red. Hit that run button, command R, make sure you've got a red square showing up here. And let's actually look at these symbols. So get rid of that background color now that we know it's there. Hit SF symbols and let's find a symbol in here. So like I said, they've got basically everything you need. I think there's a symbol for like home, which is a very common uh, thing people want. What you can do is just type in the name here or you can do a command shift C. Uh, make sure you do command shift C to copy the name. If you do command C, it'll copy the symbol itself. And you can actually 
uh, paste it in here in a moment. We're going to assign the image, which is the UI image. And if you open up the constructor and go through this laundry list here, you'll have come across system name. And there's three of them. And we're going to actually look at the configuration one as well. But let's start off with this one. And for the string, paste on in uh, what you just went ahead and copied. And there is our symbol. So you notice it's blue here, whereas here it is white. And that brings me to the topic of tinting. So tinting, uh, you can apply any tint color to this. Uh, the reason you can do that is because it's a monochrome image. So go ahead and say image view, tint color is going to be, let's do system red. So you can say system red, uh, looks awesome. You can do it with any color for that matter. Uh, what's really nice about this is it, it really helps with dark mode support instead of having multiple images in different colors. So definitely a welcomed uh, thing for that. The other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is the weight factor. So you saw there was a constructor in here where you can pass in a configuration. And we're going to create a config right above this. Let's close this antivirus pop-up that likes to pop up in all my videos and make an appearance. And a config is basically a UI image uh, dot symbol configuration. And if you open up this constructor, there's quite a few different things you can tweak. Uh, font, scale, uh, point size. There's a weight in here somewhere. We're going to stick with the weight. And let's uh, bring that simulator back so you guys can visually capture in your minds what this looks like right now. Let's go ahead and change this to be ultra, ultra lights. Hit that run button and let's see what that looks like. Now you can see the thickness of the, uh, the outline of this icon got super thin. So you can control these things simply through your code, which is pretty awesome because like I mentioned, back in the day, you would have to go and Photoshop this or tweak it or have multiple assets in your uh, actual project, in your XC assets. And A, it increases your app size, and B, it's kind of just a pain to do. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what a few of these look like side by side. So I'm going to create this image view in a for loop. So let me get rid of this. And we're going to say uh, for X in zero up until three, we can create that for loop. You don't want to center it. We can grab this, throw this in here. Don't need to return it. Let's move this up here. And let's make sure that we change the uh, X and Y position every time. So we know this is 150, so we can center it in the X by saying this is view.frame.size.width minus the width of the image over two. And the Y, we're simply going to bump it a little bit every time so it doesn't overlap with the three images. So we'll start off with 30. And this is going to be 170 times uh, the X. But we're going to cast the X as a CG float. Hit that Run button, and we get our three images vertically stacked. So one thing I'll do is let's change up this color so we can create a uh, array of a few different colors. So we can say system green, system blue, and let's go purple, let's do one more, let's do yellow, and then we can grab a random color out of this, random element, like so. And the other thing we'll do here is let's go ahead and set a different uh, config each time. So we're going to say the uh, config by default. We're just going to give it a type of UI image dot symbol uh, configuration. And we'll save x is 0, do that. Uh, else, do that. And we'll do, I don't know, let's do bold. And let's add an else if in here as well for 1. And if it's 1, we'll go ahead and make this uh, regular, I guess. I think that's one of them we can pick from. And let's see. Let's pick a different image. So let's go with a bell. I think that's one of them. Go ahead and hit Run. And now you can see the difference in color, the difference in weight. And actually, the weight makes a pretty dramatic uh, difference. 
So uh, I, I have definitely not used every single symbol in here. There are way too many to actually even begin with. But uh, but yeah, that, definitely take a look in here. What I really like about the images is they're super subtle, but they're also very consistent. Like if you take a look at these two with the plus and the minus, uh, they've just done a really good job of making sure that all their iconography is very consistent. And the fact that you can adjust it with uh, colors, weight, and all that good stuff, that makes it even better. One thing I will point out before wrapping this video up is if you go ahead and uh, try to change certain things, like if we try to go with the textile, and if we come in here and we select a large title, you're going to see various different effects. So in this case, a large title, uh, you can't really discern what the visual difference is. Not all icons tweak with different types of configurations, so you definitely do have to look at the reference. But let's uh, let's try a different one and see what happens. So like if we go ahead and uh, let's just do scale, and if we give it a scale of large for this top one, you'll see that it probably looks almost identical to what it looked like before. Uh, the difference is actually got a little less uh, bold. It's uh, less bold if I'm seeing it correctly than this one, very, very subtle. So these changes are super subtle. You can definitely look at the reference, but in general, SF Symbols is a huge win for all of us iOS uh, devs in the community. So definitely check it out, super great to work with. So that said, I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you haven't destroyed that like button already, that like button is really waiting for you to absolutely destroy it. It wants to be smashed, go ahead and hit it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, enjoy the videos. Uh, don't hesitate to do that. Don't be afraid. Our content is daily. Uh, and by our content, I mean my content. So uh, definitely hit subscribe if you enjoy the content. Uh, throw a comment down below if you have any questions, comments, if you like my dumb jokes. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.